Hello. The DJI Neo is a great starting point if you're thinking about getting into the FPV hobby. It's cost-effective, user-friendly, and weighing in at only 135 grams, it avoids a lot of the restrictions that bigger, heavier drones face. But even though it's probably one of the most straightforward ways into the hobby, there's still a bunch of stuff that you kind of need to know before you get flying. And that's exactly what this video is all about. I'm gonna kind of assume that you either already have a Neo or that you're thinking about getting one already. So I won't cover a lot of the other benefits that the Neo brings with it. I'm just gonna focus on the FPV side for this video. And what really I've learned on my journey so far, because honestly, getting into FPV has just been one of the best decisions I think I've ever made. All right, we are flying nearly 40 miles an hour. Oh yeah, that's called an orbit. All right, yeah. This, this really is and make, this is just totally different. A bit cockier as I get nearer to us. Try not smack things for us. Whoa! All right, so to start with, you're gonna to need to buy yourself the Neo, where is he? Over here. The goggles and a controller. Where did I put the controller? It's down here. Now, before you start panicking about the cost of these things individually, because if you look at them, they are pretty expensive on their own. You'll be very pleased to hear that DJI have actually bundled together a package called the Neo Motion Fly More Combo. And in that combo, you get the N3 goggles, you get the motion controller, you get the Neo itself, of course, and you get a couple of spare batteries and some other bits and bobs. Now, the price of this kit varies between retailers, but I've just done a quick search and found one for sale for 336 quid, which is pretty cheap given the goggles alone set you back at least 200 quid. Now, the cool thing is that by buying the motion fly more combo and getting hold of the N3 goggles, you're actually kind of future-proofing yourself a bit. These are also compatible with the DJI Avata 2, and they're also compatible with other drones that use the DJI Air unit. The motion controller, though, is a really, really good starting point. It'll get you into the air really quickly. It'll get you flying FPV really intuitively, and it'll just kind of give you a taste of what it feels like to fly in FPV. And once again, it's compatible with the Avata 2. Okay, so let's say you've gone ahead, you bought yourself the motion fly more combo, and you're ready to get out there flying. There are a few things to note before we go ahead and do that though. Now this part of the video might get a little bit dry, but it's really, really important to listen because there's some really, really important tips in here that you don't want to miss. Now the great thing about the Neo is, as I said earlier, it's under 250 grams, which means that you avoid a lot of the restrictions that you get with heavier drones like the Avata 2, for example. And that also means that you don't need any kind of license to fly the Neo. What you do need though is an operator ID. The operator ID basically tells people who the drone belongs to. You can register for one on the CAA or the Civil Aviation Authority's website and it will only cost you about £11. It's worth noting that this is obviously only covering the UK. Other countries will have different systems in place but I think they'll have something similar to an operator ID that you'll probably need to register for should you want to fly. So check your local aviation authority's website to find out what you need to do. Now, once you have your operator ID, you'll just need to display it somewhere on the drone. Nifty little tip here, you don't actually have to display it on the outside of the drone. You can display it inside the battery compartment of your drone. As long as it's findable by authorities relatively easily without having to you know, take things apart too much, then it's totally fine. Now, as I mentioned before, you don't have to have any kind of license to fly the Neo, but I would strongly recommend looking at the flyer ID section of the CA of the C, I always call it the CIA website. The CAA website, not the CIA website. You don't want to go there. That's uh, that's a different thing. To get your flyer ID, you basically just have to do a relatively short, I think it's about 20 to 30 minutes test. It's completely free of charge. And as you do it, you'll learn quite a lot about what it means to fly a drone and what you can do legally, what you can't do, etc., etc. I would honestly just recommend doing it regardless of what kind of drone you're looking to fly, even if you don't technically need to, because it will just give you some confidence in knowing, you know, how you can fly legally and what to avoid. Now, something else I'd really strongly recommend getting before you fly is public liability insurance. So boring, but so, so important. Basically, this is gonna cover you should you, I don't know, crash into a really nice car and damage it. it you'll be covered, I think. Actually, don't quote me on that. This isn't legal advice, but it's for that kind of thing. Now, a really great way here in the UK to get hold of public liability insurance is just to go over to fbvuk.co.uk and sign up for membership. You'll not only get public liability insurance by doing that, but you'll also get access to a bunch of really useful resources about FPV. So it's kind of a win-win. Again, that's UK specific. 
If you're in a different country, you'll need to look at what kind of public liability insurance providers there are out there. There will be tons for drones. It's really easy and it's fairly cheap to, to get hold of. And finally, I would very strongly recommend registering for DJI's Care Refresh service. Think of it as a kind of insurance policy for your drone. If it flies away or you crash it or you sink it in some water, whatever it might be, you can get a low cost, really quick replacement from DJI. And I know what you're thinking to yourself, I'm never gonna crash, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. I don't know. Oh. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> you can hit it. You can hit it. No, you can't. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jesus. <laughs> Did I crash? Yeah, I crashed. So I also made an entire video about my experiences with Care Refresh, where I documented everything from the start of the process right through to the end. Uh, go and watch it, I'm gonna link it up here. It's an amazing service, honestly, and it's only about 19 pounds for the year for the Neo, so 100% worth getting. If you fly without it, then, I mean, you're kind of, you're kind of, I was gonna say stupid, but that's really harsh. You're not very wise. Okay, so with all that out of the way, it's now time to take your Neo out and fly it. There are a few flight restrictions on where exactly you can fly. Uh, just check your DJI app. It's got a nice little kind of flying section on there where it'll tell you where exactly there are flight restrictions and where there aren't. There's also a really good app called Drone Assist that you can download that will again show you that information. Just double check that, make sure you're not flying you know, in an airport. Now, when you start flying with the motion controller, you'll really enjoy it and you'll find it really exciting and fun and uh, you'll think, well, I don't ever need to go on to, to manual mode, surely. But I reckon after about four or five hours of flying, you'll start to get itchy feet. So now let's move on to talk about this guy. It's the FPV3 remote and it's going to allow you to fly in full manual mode. At this stage, I would very strongly recommend jumping into an FPV flight simulator on your PC or your Mac. It's a really, really cheap and effective way to figure out how you feel about manual mode before you kind of go all in. Arguably, this could actually be the very first step you take even before you buy a Neo, because ultimately, if you do it and you don't like it, it might save you the money of buying the Neo in the first place, which could be good. Now you will need a controller to fly in a simulator. You can use the FPV3 remote if you've already bought it, or you can also, I think, use like console controllers, PlayStation control, something like that should work in it. The simulator that I use is called Liftoff. It's 15 pounds, I think, on Steam. I'll drop a link in the description. And again, I did an entire video about learning how to fly in manual mode in Liftoff Simulator. So I will, again, link that here or here somewhere for you to watch. After this video though, keep watching this and then, and then kind of come back to those and then binge all of my other videos, please. Now I would suggest getting at least six hours of experience flying in a simulator, but realistically you want to get closer to 10 or 15 hours before you take the Neo out to fly it in manual mode. And once you've done that, assuming you don't absolutely hate it, the next step will be to buy your FPV3 remote. Now unfortunately, this is actually, I think, one of the least cost effective parts of the whole journey because this control is like 140 quid which, I mean, it's, it's cool, it, it feels all right, but that seems very expensive to me. But it will allow you to fly in manual mode, and honestly, it's, I think it's worth every penny. Now, as soon as you receive the control, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is adjust the throttle stick so that when you move it down or up or wherever, it stays in place. Unlike you'll see here, this one flips back up. When you receive the control, this one will also just kind of flip back up. Now to do this, you'll need to pop the back off of your controller using a small flat tool. And once that's off, you'll need to insert an Allen key into the hole labeled F1 and tighten it until the throttle stick is no longer loose. Right, and next you will need to set up your FPV3 remote with your goggles so that you can actually switch into manual mode when you're flying. In order to do that, get your goggles on, go to the settings menu, then go to control and then remote control. There you'll see various button bindings for your controller. Here you'll want to go down to the bottom where it says custom mode. Click on that and then change it from sport mode to manual mode. What that means is basically when you start flying, you can use this little toggle here to switch yourself into manual mode. One other thing I would mention and that you will want to become very good friends with when you start flying with this control is this button right next to it here. That's the pause button. <laughs> uh, you will find on many occasions you are wildly out of control and you need to just hit the panic button and stop everything and that button will do exactly that if the neo is upside down and falling to the ground it will switch itself back to the right way up and it will just stop in midair well, pause <laughs> uh, it's not completely foolproof i have crashed loads 
attempting to do that, but it has saved me a bunch of times as well. So yeah, get really used to pressing that button right there. So, okay, so now let's continue with the controller setup. Assuming you've been flying in a simulator, you've probably been flying in full acro mode. What that means is that there is no limit to how far the drone can roll, and there's no limit to how far the drone can kind of pitch. What that basically means is you can do full rolls and you can do full kind of flips with your drone. Now on the Neo, this is called the attitude limit. And as a factory setting, the attitude limit will be on, which means that you won't be able to tip your drone over too far. You'll only be able to go so far and you won't be able to flip it or anything like that. That can be pretty good for the first one or two flights, but I would recommend switching off pretty quickly because it can, I think, give you some bad habits if you fly with it for too long. To turn the attitude limit off, once again, go to your settings menu in your goggles, then control and then into the remote control menu, and then navigate to the gain and expo screen. There you will see the attitude limit is toggled on. Just toggle that off and you're good to go. And that is it. With all of that out of the way, you are finally ready to take to the sky and fly in manual mode. I would strongly, strongly recommend finding a very, very open, a very, very clear space without many obstacles, with not many people around and stuff like that, because again, you will crash. Don't feel bad about it, but you definitely will crash, probably quite a lot. Luckily, the Neo is super hardy. I mean, look at the state of mine. Look at, can you see the grass stains and stuff on it? It's an absolute mess. I've crashed this thing a million times and I, I honestly don't know how it's still going, but it is, it's very, very hardy. And as a final, final note, as you get a few more flights under your belt in manual mode, you might want to start thinking about tweaking your gain and expo rates. These are basically just how your drone responds to the controller inputs that you make. I made an entire video about this where I use ChatGPT, of all things, to tune the rates of my drone. Uh, and I'll link that again above for you to watch maybe after this video. But if you're feeling a bit lazy, you don't want to watch that whole video, totally fine. I'm going to share the rates here. So you can maybe try those out. I found they improved my flying experience dramatically. And that's about it, I think. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been helpful in giving you some of the tips and tricks that you need to know in order to get flying in FPV with the Neo. If you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like. Also consider subscribing because I've got lots more of this kind of content to come and I'm gonna to continue to share my learnings about the FPV experience. And also drop me a comment. I always love to hear from you. Just tell me what you think. Tell me where you are in your journey. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, that's it. Uh, until next time, have a lovely, lovely, lovely rest of your day. And yeah, I'll see you, see you in a week or so. Bye. Oh, I'm parched and really hot.